Kami Sato Ayaka, present. Um, hello, folks. My Ayaka guide is finally out. She is a 5 star sword user that focuses on cryo damage and can be played as a main DPS or a burst support. Both styles work out well since about half her damage output comes from her burst anyways. Compared to Ganyu, our other cryo queen, Ayaka is pretty close in single target damage but still does not match Ganyu when it comes to fighting multiple enemies. However, with Ayaka, you don't need to aim with a bow, so that's a plus to many players. She is also voiced by the iconic seiyu Saori Hayami, who have done many roles as sword wielders and ice users in the past. Here are some of those characters you might recognize. So yeah, Ayaka having Saori's voice sure feels natural. Anyways, my guide will have the usual layout. I will go over her attacks and abilities first, recommended rotation and quirks, then go into her equipment and team comps. First off, her normal and charge attacks. She has pretty good motion values for a sword user, and her strong normal and charge attacks help give her the main DPS role. You don't have to worry about losing damage from a mix of physical and crowd damage either. Every time she finishes her dash, her blade gets infused by cryo, making her slashes also do cryo damage. This infusion is on the weak side, so if you have a C6 Bennett, his burst will still make Ayaka do pyro damage instead of cryo. Ayaka's dash is very important to her kit. You want to dash about every 5 seconds to maintain the cryo infusion, but in addition to that, her Ascension 4 passive gives her 18% bonus cryo damage and restores 10 stamina if she touches an enemy when popping out of the dash. This means the stamina usage is free as long as you only tap the dash. For her normal and charge attack combo, I would recommend using N4CA and N1CA. You can do both combos within the 5 second window and keep the same cryo infusion, but her charge attacks do have some extra recovery animation, so you might want to dash after every charge attack anyways. You can actually dash cancel the animation pretty early. Take a look at the difference here. Both versions still does the full charge attack damage, but you can begin the next attack faster with better animation cancels. The sad part about cancelling this is not seeing the entire stylish judgment cut animation. If there are multiple enemies, then just spam her charge attack instead. It has a pretty big AoE and can reach enemies not next to you. It can even reach some materials that are on pillars, but it cannot hit the oceanid birds. It can also not hit the archer hilly churros that are high up on the towers. However, her charge attack can hit enemies inside Venti's burst. This footage is from the Ayaka main discord and the Venti is level 70, so I'm not sure if this is effective for higher level Ventis with a stronger suction. Also, the second charge attack did not do damage because the target was already dead at the time her slash went out, so it just slashed the air in front of her. Her elemental skill is the most lackluster part of her kit. It is very quick and does decent damage. This also buffs her normal and charge attack damage for 6 seconds with her ascension 2 passive. The problem with the skill is its cooldown. It has a 10 second cooldown, while the buff only lasts for 6 seconds, so the downtime feels kinda weird. 
Her constellation 1 does kind of help fix this, but I don't really talk about getting constellations for a 5 star character because that gets expensive. Then there's her elemental burst, which is the strongest part of her kit. It does about 50% of her damage output, but it costs 80 energy so you will need a cryo battery on her team. The moving sphere lasts for 5 seconds and can do up to 20 hits on each target. The damage does snapshot, which means all the buffs Ayaka have when she casts a burst will keep doing the same bonus damage even if they fall off Ayaka before the 5 second burst is over. For Ayaka's burst combo, you want to dash and then use the elemental skill followed by the burst. You want to use her skill before the burst so you can start collecting the energy particles during the animation lock. But in addition, you want to dash before using any of her skills to take advantage of that 18% cryo bonus. If you want to get an extra boost, you can use your Prowl Battery skill, then swap to Ayaka, and then dash E and Q. Doing this fast enough will give you the extra energy particles from your Cryo Battery and Ayaka skill. Her elemental burst will stop moving after touching an enemy, and will continue after the enemy is destroyed. It hits pretty high up so it will catch enemies inside Venti's burst, but it will stop moving on the first enemy hit, so you want to move closer before using Ayaka's burst to ensure all the enemies are getting hit. If it's just a single target, then it doesn't matter. To ascend Ayaka, you need Sakura Blooms. Here is their locations from the interactive map. You can also click on the top right for my video that shows you the exact locations. The Sakura Blooms will respawn every 48 hours. For her talents, you want to level her elemental burst first, regardless if she is your main DPS or a burst support. Then the normal attack and elemental skill order will change depending on her playstyle. Main DPS will level the normal attack second, while burst support will level the elemental skill second. Both her ascension passes are also really good. Her ascension 2 won't affect her burst support row, but it's nice for her main DPS. Her second passive makes her dash cost 0 stamina, and gives you a cryo buff for 10 seconds. This is actually one of the best ascension passives I've seen in the game so far. Then there's her crafting passive. This is similar to Mona's passive, but which one is better? Let's find out with this quick example. Let's say I want to craft 10 blue weapon materials, so I will need 30 of the green version. With Ayaka's passive, on average, I will get 3 green materials for free. With Mona's passive, on average, I will get 2.5 green materials back for crafting 10 blue ones. If you have both Ayaka and Mona on the same account, then use Ayaka to help craft weapon materials because statistically, she provides a better rate of return. Unlike most of the other 5 star characters, Ayaka's constellation does not vastly change her playstyle and it does not make her overpowered. Actually, most of her constellation is pretty lackluster and can easily be skipped without worries. Her constellation 1 lets her normal and charge attacks reduce the cooldown of her 10 second elemental skill, which has nice synergy with her ascension 2 passive. On average, this constellation will make her cooldown be 2 seconds shorter. I think this and her constellation 2 are her best constellations. Speaking of C2, this creates 2 more blizzard spheres that does 20% as much damage as the main sphere. The main benefit for this is the much larger AoE with her burst, letting her freeze a lot more enemies. If you use her burst point blank on a large enemy, you can actually hit them with all 3 spheres. Take a look at how it works on the mechanical array boss and the ruined guard. Her constellation 4 reduces the enemy defense. I'm not sure if this includes resistance though. If it doesn't, then this constellation is only useful for a support Ayaka on a physical damage team. It will stack with the superconduct debuff, but it won't really help her own personal damage since she's all cryo. Finally, her constellation 6. It's very weak compared to the other game changing 5 stars. It just adds another 300% damage to her charge attack every 10 seconds. Sure, it's nice to have, but 10 seconds can feel very long in the middle of combat. Now for her weapons. I'll do things differently this time around. Instead of using Tear Maker, I'll show the damage simulation from the Ayaka main discord. These are the theoretical strength of each weapon when using Ayaka in a freeze comp. This is assuming 4 piece Blizzard Strayer, 
and includes the free 55% crit rate on frozen enemies. As expected, the new Mist Blitter is her best in slot. It gives crit damage and tons of bonus elemental damage as well. Since her burst snapshots, you can actually take full advantage of the 3 stack bonus for her burst. The Stomach Shaper is also a great weapon if you can maintain the shield. This means you will need to use a Diona battery or a Geo character on the last slot to create shields. The Jade Cutter is usually a great weapon on any sword DPS. It is still good on Ayaka, but a little weaker since it gives a crit rate substat. With this weapon, you might end up having too much crit rate and wasting some of the stats, depending on your artifacts. The Aquila Favonia is also decent since it has very high base damage. Even though the physical damage substat will be wasted, the overall high attack of this sword still puts it above the other 5 stars and 4 star weapons. The other 5 star swords have about the same strength as a strong 4 star, so nothing too special about them. The Skyward Blade is nice if you don't have enough energy recharge to maintain her burst uptime. You will need about 140% energy recharge depending on your team to get her burst back on cooldown. Now for the 4 star weapons. There are 3 that I want to focus on. The Black Cliff, the Black Sword, and the new craftable Amanoma Kageuchi. All 3 of these are good for her. The Black Cliff is actually the best 4 star this time around, and you can get it as a free to play. Normally, the Black Sword will be stronger than the Black Cliff, but the crit rate substat gives a similar problem as the Jade Cutter, with having too much crit rate and not enough crit damage. That's why the free to play Black Cliff comes out on top this time around. Then there's the new craftable weapon. You need to complete the Farmer's Treasure World Quest to learn the recipe. The Kageyuchi has good base attack for a 4 star weapon. It also provides really nice energy recharge which is helpful for Ayaka. At refinement 5, using her burst after collecting 3 seeds will regenerate 36 energy. And the last weapon I want to mention is the 3 star Harbinger of Dawn. Since it's a 3 star weapon, you can eventually get it to refinement 5 pretty easily. When max, this sword gives 47% crit damage and 48% crit rate, and can easily compete with the other 4 star weapons. Now for artifacts. This one is pretty simple. Her best set is the 4 piece Blizzard Strayer on a freeze team. This set is just too powerful since the 4 piece bonus gives 40% crit rate. The alternative choices is a 2 piece Blizzard Strayer with 2 piece Noblesse or any of the 18% attack set. If she is your burst support, then go with 2 piece Noblesse or 4 piece Blizzard Strayer. Don't use the 18% attack set. For the stats, go with the traditional attack percent sand, cryo damage goblet, and critical damage helmet. You do not want to use a crit rate helmet with the Blizzard Strayer set since you might overcap, depending on your weapon. I also want to mention the new artifact set, Shimenawa's Reminiscence. It seems good at first since it increases her normal and charge attacks, but it ruins her elemental burst which accounts for half of Ayaka's damage output. So that new set is a no-no on the 4 piece. Now for her team comps. The best and easiest team for Ayaka will be a freeze team. This consists of your main DPS Ayaka, a cryo battery, someone to apply hydro, and the last slot is a fill. The iconic Morgana team will have Diona, Mona, and Venti, which has great synergy with their huge AoE, high energy particle supplies, and how well the cooldowns align but you can sub in any of these rows with other similar units. Here are all the good options on each row. The cryo battery can be Diona, Kaya, Rosaria, or even Ganyu. Ganyu for this slot isn't ideal for a battery, but her burst does make Ayaka do more cryo damage. Mona is the best choice since her omen debuff that gives you extra damage on enemies does not start expiring while enemies are still frozen, so you end up doing more damage for a lot longer time than intended. If you don't have Mona, then Jingcho and Barbara also works. Then we have Kokomi, a new Hydro unit coming soon. I'm not sure why MiHoYo is adding another Hydro caster since we already have Mona and Barbara, but there's nothing we can do about that. With any luck, Kokomi's elemental skill might leave behind an object that applies Hydro damage over a long time, which can make her the second best Hydro support on a freeze team. For the last slot, you can have an Anemo character help group up enemies and provide a debuff with the 4 piece Venera set. If the enemies are unfreezing too early, then add a second Hydro character to help out. You can also add in a healer like Bennett in the last slot too, 
It's pretty flexible, even for a freeze team. Ayaka can also work on a melt team, but it won't be as strong as the freeze teams I just mentioned. Since Ayaka does a lot of small hits instead of fewer strong hits, you lose out on a bit of damage. There's this thing called internal cooldown, which is an invisible timer that stops elemental reactions from occurring too quickly. This limits how often Ayaka can melt with her attack. From testing, Ayaka seems to melt on every third hit. Anyways, for her melt team, you will have Ayaka, Shangling, Bennett, and the last slot is the fill. Shangling is the best off-field pyro unit and Bennett can boost your damage with his burst and pyro resonance, while also acting as a healer. The last slot can be a cryo battery, Zhongli, or an enamel unit to help group and debuff enemies. If you don't have much energy recharge on Ayaka, then go with a battery. If you are dying too often, then go with Zhongli if you have him. The fill slot is pretty versatile, so pick the one that works best for you. And that's it for my guide on Ayaka. She is another great addition to the game, and you spend a lot of time with her in the Inazuma storyline. Even though there's a bunch of Cryo characters already, she still feels different to play than the others. Her power level might not be as high as Ganyu for multiple enemies, but Ayaka is still very keen with her swordsmanship. As always, thanks for watching, smash that like button, and have fun out there, traveler. It's the Shirasagi Hirakimi! <sighs> Kami Sato Ayaka, present. <laughs>